everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now before we get started, a uh, couple of bits of housekeeping to do. First of all, welcome to all the new uh, subscribers that we've taken on recently. The uh, channel's had a bit of a surge, which is uh, mind-blowing. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you and welcome to all the new people who are coming on board. Uh, secondly, I've had quite a few comments about this little guy who's been sat on my lathe for a few months now. Uh, he was being thrown away by one of my kids and I didn't have the heart to see him go. Uh, so I put a couple of magnets on his feet and I stuck him on the top of the lathe. Uh, he hasn't fallen off yet and he seems quite happy there so he can stay. Uh, I've told this to a few people but they say, you know, he needs a name. So if you can think of a name for this guy, leave it in the comments below and uh, the one with the most likes or the one that, I, that appeals to me the most, uh, that will become his name. Right, okay, so today's project. Uh, I get an awful lot of uh, new turners to the channel. Uh, and I wanna do something, not necessarily specifically for them, but I wanna show a nice, easy technique to put an inlay into a bowl. It's easy to do, it doesn't require a great amount of investment, uh, and it can be done over a short period of time. What I'm going to be using is five minute epoxy and some brass swarf. Now I've just picked this up online. It's fairly cheap, easy to get hold of. Uh, and if you have any engineer friends, you may be able to get hold of some for free. So we're going to use these to create the inlay and some uh, dye as well, obviously. Uh, and we're going to be doing it on this olive ash blank. Now, it's not the nicest blank in the world. It's a nice piece of wood, but the blank itself is a little bit, uh, has a few issues. We've got a, a bark inclusion here, and we've got a bit of bark. Now, normally with the bark primarily being on this side, I would have made this the bottom, knowing that I would turn it away as I create the side of the bowl. But because I've got this in here, which is right where we would normally put a tenon or a, a mortise, uh, and that, is now going to have to be the bottom of the bowl. Okay, we are going to lose a little bit on the diameter, but it's going to give, her, give us uh, the best, safest option moving forward. So I'm going to get my drill out. We're going to uh, mount this with a worm screw and we'll get started. It's not the largest blank in the world, but we're always going to be safe whenever we can be. So, tailstock to start. I'll go sharpen up and we shall begin. Nearly gone. I'm we'll not worried too much about that last bit. We'll get that in the final throws of creating the outside shape. Right, so let's we'll start working from here now and we'll start heading towards the center. Give, give us a flat base, maybe put a little foot in it and then decide if we're putting a tenon uh, or a mortise. It's probably gonna be a mortise. Okay, that all looks very nice. We've got a bit of a, a split there with a the pith, but that's not going to give us any problems. We can decide whether to fill it or not, but I might just leave it because it's completely natural and uh, it doesn't look horrible. Right, okay, so I'm going to quickly go and sharpen up again so I can put a, a finishing cut on this side and then we'll put in the mortise or the recess in here and maybe put a little bit of decoration just on the outside of it. OK, 
Okay, that's a pretty good finish. And I'll take very little sanding just to get a few of the little tool marks out, but that won't take much at all. That's going to need a little bit more cleaning up. We've still got some of the original base on there, so I need to go over that again. So I'll do that and then put the recess in. Okay, I'll get set up for sanding. Uh, as usual, I'll let you watch the start, but I'll bring you back when it's all done. Okay, that all went very well. I did stop halfway through and make the decision just to fill that crack we had on the uh, on the pith area. And it all went quite smoothly. I just used a uh, VO3A black CA glue to do that. Right, okay, we're gonna just use a bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol just to clean out the grooves and then we'll apply a sealer and then we'll go on with uh, an abrasive paste. It also gives us a good chance to look at the grain. And it's really quite nice on this olive ash. Shall grab the sealer, ready for when that's dried. Okay, I'm just going on with a cellulose sealer. The advantage of this stuff is that we can buff it in and we don't have to let it dry before we go further. Now time for the abrasive paste. I'm continuing to use the uh, True Grit abrasive paste. Other types are available. The reason we use an abrasive paste is that it enables us to get a lot smoother finish before we, find, before we apply the final coat. And the smoother the base, the shinier the coat. Right, the way to apply this is we start off at a slow speed while we're rubbing in and then we gradually increase the speed up to uh, about a thousand. And this helps the particles break down and the, uh, the surface gets smoother and smoother as we go along. Now we just remove any excess grit left on the surface with our isopropyl alcohol. Right, let that evaporate. Okay, the top coat of Hampshire Sheen. This ironically is uh, sorry, applied in just the same way as the uh, the abrasive paste. You start off slow and then build up speed into a final finish. Okay, when this is polished in, I'll turn it around and we'll start on the inside. Thank you. 
Okay, we've turned the bowl back round. Because this face is quite uneven, I do have quite a bit of a wobble. So while I'm taking this face down flat, I am going to bring up tailstock support at the start just to keep thing, everything nice and safe. Talking of safety, uh, a couple of hours has passed since I've turned this round and I've, I've picked the kids up from school and done a few things. Uh, read a couple of messages on face on uh, YouTube, etc. And one gentleman kindly pointed out that wearing a ring while working with any kind of rotating machinery or any machinery is not a great idea. Now I have been told this before and it's about time that I did something about it. Now this ring, my wife put on my finger many years ago. It doesn't come off very easily. And I did make a vow never to take it off. Uh, but it does need covering when I'm turning. So I've ordered a, a protective sleeve to go over the top to make it safer. And until it arrives, I shall wear tape. So it's time for me to be a good example for the first time in my life. Uh, so we'll be safe for now. Right, we're going to turn this flat and then we'll start talking about the inlay. Still a bit of a way to go to get this all out, but it shouldn't give us too many problems. It doesn't go all the way through, so hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that relatively soon. Now we are putting an inlay in this, so we need to leave a reasonable distance in from the edge for us to, to get this in. Initially I'm thinking around there. So the inlay, inside of the bowl ledge there, and that's where the inlay is going to be. We may want to shift it all over a little bit, but I'll have a look how it goes the deeper we get into the uh, hollowing out the bowl. Right, so I'll do a few more cuts around here. We'll take the tailstock away, get the bowl somewhere close to its correct and final depth, and then worry about the inlay. That hole there is the other side of the one we filled in from the outside, so we'll have to give that the same treatment, I think. Right, we'll take away the tailstock now. Take a bit, take the inside a bit further down, and then onto the inlay. good enough depth for now. Right, we'll start worrying about the outside. Right, I'm just going to draw in these lines for this inlay just so I can see a bit clearer and gauge if it's going to be in the right place or not. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. I've left this inside edge just a little bit wider than this side edge because we've still got some finishing to do on here so it'll bring it in a little bit. So I'd like both the inside edge and outside edge to be equally distanced. Right, I'm gonna start hollowing out this inlay. I'm just gonna use a, a pointy carbide to do it. Okay, 
Excellent. Right, I'm just gonna get a bit of sandpaper and just smooth up these edges and then we'll set up for pouring the inlay. I'll set up and I'll bring you back in a second. Okay, I think we're all ready. We've got a bit of metal swarf. We've got some black mica powder. I've got some five minute epoxy, clear. Got a couple of spatulas. Scoop for mica powder. Small blowtorch with a lighter and a larger blowtorch just in case things get out of hand. Okay. This epoxy needs mixing before we start. It's a two part, so you've got to mix it thoroughly before we do anything at all with it. Right. When that's done, we can pour in bit of the mica powder. It does colour quite easily so you don't need an awful lot of this stuff. Right, that should be fine. Now we are just going to literally grab dollops like that and let it drip and fill our recess. Wearing rubber gloves for this is a very good idea. Now you can see we've got a few gaps around and about. So this is where the small blowtorch comes in. Now if this is gonna play ball, you just gently warm A slightly larger one. Gently warm the resin and it makes it far more liquid. And it'll soon seep into all the gaps. Like that. We can use one of our spatulas and just give it a help round so everything's the same depth. It also does something else because we have to mix up the resin and then mix the powder into it. There's an awful lot of air bubbles in there and hitting it with a blowtorch just helps release those bubbles. It doesn't get them all but it does get an awful lot. Right, I'm going to take this out of the way for a second. I can put some of these on the surface so I can grab them easily and scatter them in. At the moment, we're just going to scatter them on the top as if you're decorating a cake. Please don't decorate cake with metal swarf. again with the blowtorch. Well, that's it. All we have to do now is wait. Okay it's nice and dry, nice and hard, so we'll turn this back and see how it looks. I'm just going to be using an old a carbide cutter for this. Uh, I forgot to mention at the start that I've never actually used this technique before, not in this ent entirety. I've put uh, brass in resin before uh, and I've used the five minute epoxy before but never together, never like this. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, I'm just gonna 
get the lathe up to speed, and then I'm just going to take gentle passes across with the carbide to start clearing the surface. Okay, that's pretty nice. We do have a couple of air pockets in here, so I'm just going to quickly take this off uh, the lathe, sit it on the bed, and just pour a bit of CA glue into here, just to fill those little voids. Okay, I'm just going to use a medium clear CA glue for this. Okay, we'll just let that sit for a little bit, then hit it with an activation spray. Okay, we'll get this back on the lathe and gently turn that back. Okay, I'm just gonna go back across this nice and gently with a negative reg scraper. Okay, excellent. Right, I'm going to start sanding. During the sanding, I'm just going to sort out this little, uh, the other side of the, the pith we've got, and I'll be doing that with uh, a bit of black CA glue. So I'll get this sorted, I'll late wash the start, and I'll bring it back when it's done. I'm really loving the look of this rim. Right, so next steps, isopropyl, then a sealer, then a abrasive grit, and then a polish. Abrasive paste. We'll clean off residue with isopropyl. And that all evaporates, put the final finish. Okay, let's take this off and have a look at what we've done. There we go. Very simple, but I'm sure you'll agree, a very effective inlay. Just simple five minute epoxy and a bit of metal swarf. It would look just as good with aluminium in there. So whatever you can get hold of. Having a beautiful olive ash bowl certainly helps with the overall look of this thing. Uh, before we wrap up, I just wanted to say a quick uh, hello and thank you to uh, Tony Stones, Kirsten Fuchs, uh, Philippa and Craig Atkinson, uh, Fiona Naylor, John Roberts, Bob McEwen, Chris Slack and Dean Harrison, who all uh, helped the site out by either buying or making a contribution through the uh, the Kofi site. Thank you guys, I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, if you wanted to buy any merchandise, I've got these stickers, the magnetic stickers available on my Kofi site. The link is in the description below. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching.
If you do have a go of it, please let me know. Please send me photographs. I would love to see them. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then I would love a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and all that kind of thing. And if you leave a comment in the section below, then we are going to do the next giveaway on the 1st of June in one month's time, or just over one month's time. So if you've left any comments uh, since the last giveaway, they will all be entered into the next prize. And, and that's about it. All right. Any comments, please leave them below. Any thoughts, please let me know. And thank you very much indeed, and I'll see you next time.